Hello, Earth Signs, Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. My name is Michelle Mabel, and I have for you a collective general starseed reading. Uh, this is for if you're sun, moon, Venus, or rising sign is in any of these Earth Signs. This reading may or may not resonate for you, although I do firmly believe that we are drawn to the readings that we are drawn to watch because there is a message in them for us. Uh, please maintain uh, a level of positivity in regards to these messages. If it doesn't apply to you, that's fine. It just doesn't apply to you and there's no need to feed any energy towards it. Uh, what you put out comes back. So please bear that in mind before leaving comments and in any sort of meditation that you might do on this message, okay? Be gentle with yourself and be gentle with others. Thank you for tuning in. I will be producing videos in this format for the time being. I also do a podcast. It's anchor.fm slash mabel808. I'm going to be reading for uh, the signs in their element collective for the time being, and also doing individual Aquarius readings because I am an Aquarius sun and we are in now the age of Aquarius and much of these energies that I'm going to be talking to you about are going to be to help you through these energies and it's going to apply most to people who have Aquarius as their sun, moon rising, or north node, and also um, being as how I'm an Aquarius, those readings are kind of for me, but I'm just going to share them with fellow Aquarius chart placements. So thank you for tuning in. I appreciate your support. Please like and subscribe. Okay, so Earth Signs, I've got one from the Starseed Oracle for you. It is Surrender to the Sweetness. It's Venus energy, pleasure, joy, making love to life. Um, this was a hard year, right? And Earth Signs, because they're fixed, they're kind of rigid sometimes, right? And uh, no judgment. Uh, it's okay. It's just the way that we operate. I have uh, a lot of Capricorn in my chart, so I, I understand. Um, I, can, I can be very airy and I can be very grounded also. So when you're grounded all the time, sometimes it's difficult to surrender to anything but more work, right, Capricorn? <laughs> and right now, the energies of this time period during the Aquarian Stellium are encouraging you to surrender to sweetness and joy and pleasure. It's been difficult and you've been working hard and it's okay to let go a little bit and surrender to what's good. This is a very highly feminine card and very sensual. And it is a call, as I've said, to surrender to the sweetness of life, to let the ever abundant feminine energy take over, to taste the fruits you've been working so hard to grow, to let your senses take over and really drink in your life with wonder, to get intoxicated on the simple bounty that this planet has to offer and which you have within you when your well is full. If your well has been feeling empty, this is the call to fill it up. The ancient Babylonians connected the feminine goddess Ishtar to the planet Venus, and in Roman mythology, Venus was the goddess of love and beauty. In our night sky, aside from the moon, Venus shines the brightest. Time is our most precious resource, and it's the greatest healer. If you've been all work and no play, this is a, time, a sign to take some time out, 
to reconnect with your lover, play with your children, and give yourself the luxury of time without an agenda. Many of us are so busy building our lives that we forget to enjoy them. We forget while, why we decided to build them in the first place. Disconnection from the sweetness causes more pain than we realize. So many of us walk into soulless buildings five days a week in the name of survival. We strive to build the life of our dreams but drive ourselves to exhaustion. This card is wooing you back to the pleasures of being human, to focusing on what really matters and enjoying your incredible life. So ask yourself, how can you surrender to the sweetness of life and what's one way you can enjoy your life a little more? I'm feeling creative activities, uh, dance, art, music, Dance and music, especially performing arts, stuff that gets you moving, stuff that gets your energy really flowing. Um, that's the message spirit <laughs> told me to, to send to you, dear listener, creative energy. I'm going to pull from the animal spirit deck. This is the wild unknown animal spirit what message do the animal spirits have for earth signs capricorn taurus and virgo please show me clearly uh, we've got three here okay so we've got uh the vulture the gazelle and the dragon okay the vulture comes in and cleans up what's left of the old okay um and really it's it's a purification energy so right now what i'm feeling for you earth sign is that you're cleaning up you know it's time to step away from the old because look that's the energy that you're moving towards, that dragon energy, and you're moving towards it fast, okay? But you have some cleaning up to do first. That vulture energy is going to clarify a lot for you, and it's going to allow you to move forward quickly. And it, it's, it's very essential for the rebalance. Like, if you don't go through that process, if you don't clean up the old energies you're not going to be able to surrender so that's that's what you need to do to move forward quickly to that surrender energy you need to clean up you need to pick away the old and get rid of it purify it to bring your energy back into balance um and once you, once you complete that, and I feel like you're really, really, really close to it, okay? It's going to bring you a heightened awareness and ability. It's also going to bring you in touch with your vulnerability. Um, the gazelle is a vulnerable energy, right? It's often preyed upon by predators, and that's part of why it's evolved to become such a fast runner. But it's, it's still... It's beautiful, but it's vulnerable. This is kind of also a reminder to come back to the present moment. Um, you know, when this when this energy here, this vulture energy of cleaning up the past, sometimes it's going to trigger emotions that make you feel unbalanced, that make you feel vulnerable that make you forget about the beauty that's around you that you should be grateful for. <clears throat> so just remember that it's just that last little bit that you're cleaning up, okay? Um, those, those predators that were in the wild for you before aren't anymore. You're sweeping that all away come back to the present moment, okay? Because in the present moment, 
you're you're fine. <laughs> you're doing great and you're going to continue to do great, okay? And what's going to happen is you're going to see your most true self, okay? This this dragon energy it's about balancing the ego, okay? So letting go of the past, cleaning it up, coming back to your center, being balanced, balancing your ego, coming into your most authentic self. That's where, this is also the energy of when this is triggering you, when the old stuff is triggering you, this is allowing you to drop into witness consciousness. So when you find that balance and you balance your ego, you can drop into witness consciousness and then it doesn't affect you as much anymore. It's not like reliving the trauma again. It's seeing it from a balanced perspective. It's seeing it from a perspective of um, acceptance. The dragon is yourself behind the self. It's your inner fire. It's your sacred intelligence. That's what you're on the verge of coming into contact with. Surrender to it. This is solar plexus energy too. So if you, if this message is resonating with you, but you're like, oh my God, you know, like I want that, but I, I don't know how. Find a solar plexus meditation. And, or even like a, a meditation that focuses on the lower three chakras, the root, the sacral, and the solar plexus. Okay. And do those meditations, you know, for at least a few days. Um, you know, and you, you don't have to spend a lot of time, 10 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day. Do it before bed. You know, you can put on healing frequencies associated to the, the uh, solar plexus chakra and sleep with it on and it will help. I recommend Meditative Mind. Um, they're one of my favorite channels when it comes to that on YouTube. Okay, Light Seers. Oh, hello. Three of Swords and Nine of Wands. Wanted to jump out kind of side by side here. Um, you've been through some heartbreak recently. And that's... Um, don't allow that to stall out your soul growth, please. Um... Yeah, okay. All right, we got something to work with here. Um, don't allow that to stunt your soul growth, okay? Uh, heartbreak happens to us. It, do it doesn't happen to us. It happens for us, okay? Um, and I'm not saying that... <sighs> mm -mm. I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing, okay? I'm saying that it's a thing that happens to all of us. And in order to balance your ego and keep it balanced, you have to understand that heartbreak is just part of the program sometimes, okay? This is, um, you know, it teaches us, okay? It's a teacher. It's not a punishment. When you shift your perspective to see it as a teacher and not a punishment, then you can forgive yourself and love yourself that much easier. Yeah, okay. So, I was a little too focused on the Three of Swords. I mean, this is a really heart-wrenching <laughs> rendition of the Three of Swords, you know, so it always kind of, like, strikes me whenever it comes out. The Nine of Wands is about determination and resilience. And this is the final push, right, for you, Earth Sign. Maybe you're tired of being closed off to love. Maybe you're like, hey, you know what? I actually have a lot of love to give. And I'm tired of it not being received well. I'm tired of it, um, you know, of it not being reciprocated. Whatever the case may be for you. This is your... That Nine of Wands energy is your resilience to go, you know what, I, I'm, I'm, I feel like there's a guarded energy here, especially with the Four of Pentacles and the Reverse King of Wands. Um, hang on just a moment. Yeah, you, you want to feel in flow with the universe and you want to, um, 
you want to accept your worth, right? And right now you don't maybe feel like you're all the way there yet. You're on the precipice of it. Um, I feel like that, that King of Wands, like, he, when he's in the reverse, he's, he's overly ambitious and he needs to be compassionate for himself. Um, like, have an attitude of gratitude about all things, um, because there's lessons in it. Um, this is really kind of, yeah, this is, this is a final push towards being in flow with the universe. You have to have compassion for yourself and temper your, any sort of explosive emotions that you might have around heartbreak. Um, because ultimately... Like, this is, this is it. Like, you are moving into this dragon energy where you're going to be very connected and balanced in your ego. And you're going to be able to look back at your past relationships, your past heartbreaks, and say, this is what I learned. And this has made me a better person. And I hope it's made them a better person, too. And I wish them well. And I wish them all the best. <laughs> right? Roxy's laying on her belly. I'm laying on her back and whining at me to come pet her. <laughs> I do want to draw just one more card from the archetypes deck for you guys. My earth signs. I appreciate you guys so much. A lot of the people who are close to me in my life are Cap Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. Uh, many of the people that I've been in relationships with have been Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. And uh, I wish them all well, and I wish them healing and, uh, and joy and the ability to surrender to the sweetness. Roxy, please stop barking at me. I'm doing one more card, baby, and then I'll come pet you. Okay? One more, and then I'll come pet you, okay? Just be patient. Ooh. Sorry, guys hit my tripod okay so the forest who doesn't love to go to the forest i know that's where i'd like to be when the sun comes back out it has been raining and dismal here for days y'all i'm so ready for a nice walk in the woods on a sunny day let's see what's um what the book has to say about it consider for a moment your earliest memory of the forest. It's likely in it included all the mythic dynamics of this archetypal space. A little fear, a little enchantment, perhaps losing your way, perhaps discovering a secret mystical treasure. Such is the magic of the forest. It requires first that you enter it and then that you get lost within it. You may think there is a path to lead you straight through, but soon enough you'll be on what is known as the pathless path. There are tricksters here, dense foliage and entanglement, but equally present are the glimmers of fairy light and friends among the trees. You're on an adventure now and there's no turning back. So embrace the dim light and the moving shadows, whether literal or imaginal, brave the forest and get lost getting found. So the recommendation here, earth sign, is to get grounded in nature. Get over here and hush your face. That's a good girl. I'll pet your ears while I talk, okay? <laughs> so yes, um, this is highly suggesting that these energies that you need to balance, it will, like that opportunity is available to you if you go and ground in nature. Um, if you haven't been even just taking a walk around the block in your neighborhood is getting out, you know? Of course, it's optimal if you could go out into a actual forest and explore and spend some time out there in meditation and walking around and exploring. If you are unable to do that for whatever reason, you can do it through meditation also. I'm sure that there are 
forest walk guided meditations on YouTube or something of that nature. Um, or even just, you know, lay down in quiet contemplation and imagine yourself walking through a forest and think about what it smells like, what it feels like to have the wind on your, on your skin and in your hair. Um, what kind of wildlife might you run across? What kind of insects might you see? Um, what kind of trees and plants are you seeing? You know, is there moss on the rocks? You know, just get yourself in that forest energy somehow. And when you do, you'll be able to find that crucial balance that you need and that, that inner vulture can come in and sweep up the old so that you can embrace the new and learn from it, okay? So that's about it. I'm gonna go pay attention to my dog now. <laughs> I wish you guys the best, and I'll be back soon with another reading for you. Um, please like, share, subscribe, support the channel. I am just starting out. I have been a long time reader, but I'm just kind of getting my feet wet with YouTube now. So, take care, and I will talk to you soon.